funny or what? <laughs> well, you're going to have to do the hitting, not me, because I know where mine will end. Well, I need a five iron actually, but it's okay. See, that makes me feel like I'm going to hit it over to the country club building. No. no? That's square. Oh, That's right. beautiful. Don't swing any harder than that. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. All right. Aim to the right of the flag. There's your target. Okay. Right next to the flag. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so, Ralph, today, thanks for joining me for World Kidney Cancer Day. This is the fourth annual event of World Kidney Cancer Day, and it's sponsored by the International Kidney Cancer Coalition, the IKCC. I, full transparency, I'm the vice chair and working with those folks. But Kidney Can is an affiliate member of this 44 group uh, group of organizations around the world that are trying to drive awareness and education on kidney cancer. So there's uh, activities going on right now in Australia, over in the UK, around the world, trying to promote awareness and education. And this year's theme is let's get physical and physical activity and how that impacts your kidney cancer diagnosis. I was living in Washington DC and going up on Capitol Hill advocating for kidney cancer research funding and we're working with some other organizations trying to raise awareness of kidney cancer. And I headed down to the UT Southwestern in Dallas to their annual kidney cancer meeting for patients. And that's where I ran into Ralph and Brenda. And I had heard about Ralph and Brenda through Smart Patients, which is an online community of kidney cancer patients. And Ralph was already a, a hero on, on Smart <laughs> Patients. We all had known about him. And we just got to meet face to face down in Dallas and got talking. And actually I went out to pizza with Brenda and we kept talking about, could we do more things together? And that was, I guess, the, the birth of Kidney Can. Brenda and I were successful with doing a Rock to Cure, so we were gonna raise money with another one. And we got very fortunate. We raised a lot of money and we were able to fund Kidney Can and, and off we went. It's right to Capitol Hill. And one, thank the champions up there that have supported kidney cancer research. But to talk to them about how kidney cancer has been underfunded for so long that we need to play catch up. And so we've seen these increases and we're thankful for it, but it's created this rejuvenation in the, in the, in the, I guess the research community. We have young investigators that are now, you know, coming to the field. You have folks pivoting maybe from other urologic cancers and looking at kidney cancer. Um, so we're really excited. There's a renewed interest in kidney cancer from this funding. So the, one of the times our, our tax dollars are, are really going to work for the for the American Here's public. Pretty much where the, the Kidney Cancer Research Summit started on the back patio over there, two and a, two, a little over two years ago. We yeah. Had, we, we, did a, we had a conference call with Hans and Steve Zeiger and Susan and you all and me, and we started brainstorming, what, what can we do? We were seeing that the 22 grants that were awarded under the Kidney Cancer Research Program from the congressional money that Ralph was talking about, the people weren't meeting, they weren't talking, there were silos of research going on. And we said, how can we break that down and get them together? And the idea was just sort of germinated right over there when we invited some doctors to come here right before Rock the Cure and talk about the future and the future of research funding. And it was agreed, you need to bring these people together. I'm down to a four now, which is, you know, but I played, you know, I don't play back as far as these two, but I have just as good time. And I'm just thankful that I could be out here enjoying this nice weather. So I know a year ago I was here and you were having a rough patch and you weren't playing any golf or no. really moving around a whole lot. And so mm -hmm. a year later, now you're here, you're looking trim and ready to play 18 holes. I'm scared to even swing a golf club next to you. <laughs> you know, I've been aggressive. I've been, had a lot of lines of treatments. I've been close to death several times. I've led, led my last rites. And um, my wife and I made a commitment that we were gonna try some radical stuff, which we did, that worked for us. And hopefully we can move us along with kidney cancer. Yeah, I know where, I, I know where I've been. <laughs> so, yeah, I look in the mirror, that's that's good enough. So like a year ago, you probably couldn't walk the golf course, much less play golf. Now well, I can't, I don't walk the golf course now, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I ride on the golf ride, but I mean, you get out and walk and up and down the hills for 18 holes, that's good. I'm not gonna do 36 anymore, but you know, 18's fine, and it seems to be enough exercise. Um, 
it, it, I, I got a ways to go. Let's, let's face it. But you know, I'm happy, and you know, to be where I am. So what you would never you, think of that. What would you tell someone who's watching this video who might be recently diagnosed and they're they're facing all kinds of uncertainties and they, they see you? What, what would you give them as advice? Well, now's a good time to have kidney cancer compared to what I started because there's a <laughs> lot of there's a lot of stuff going on that is exciting. I would uh, definitely stay up with uh, kidney can, and I would definitely go on smart patients. You don't know what's going to work. You can't give up. You just don't know what's going to happen. I mean. I never gave up when I was, you know, had, they told me I had a couple days to live. Just don't ever give up. That's the key.